For this video, I'd like to discuss how to evaluate functions from their graph. And the most difficult part of these exercises is understanding the notation and understanding what the problem is actually asking for. So let's say we had some function, f of x is 3x minus 4, and I ask for f of 2. So remember from the previous video on evaluating functions what this notation means. This is essentially given that x is equal to 2, what is the function value? Or in essence, what is the function equal to? So when we have an equation, we just plug in x anywhere we see it inside our function. So we'd have 3 times 2 minus 4, or 6 minus 4, which is 2. So when we see f of 2, we know this is equal to 2 because of the equation. Now in this problem, it's very similar. Except this time we have a function g, and since we're dealing with the x and the y axes, we know that the thing on the inside, that's our independent variable, that's our x value. So in this case, we're given that x is minus 4, and we're basically asking, what is our y value? Or in other words, we just need to find what the y value is, given that x is minus 4. So we need to find an x value of minus 4, which is right here. And then we want to go up to our curve, this blue function g. Since we're asking for the y value on this function g when x is minus 4. So we'll go up to the curve. We'll find the point where it intersects, and then we'll figure out what the y value is. So you can just kind of scroll over and see that y is at 1. So when x is minus 4 for our function g, the y value or the function value is equal to 1. So we would put 1 into this box here. Okay, let's look at a couple more of these just to make sure you understand the basics. So it looks like for this function, we have the function k, this blue curve here. And again, we're dealing with x for our independent variable and y for our dependent variable. So when we see k of minus 1, that just means that x is minus 1, and we need to find y. So we find an x value of minus 1 right here, and we go all the way up to our curve. It looks like it intersects at this point right here, and we just need its y value, which looks to be 7. So this curve k, this function, goes through the point minus 1, comma 7. So when x is minus 1, the y value here would be positive 7. And moving on to another one. So this one's a little different, but essentially the same thing. Now we need to find f of minus 3. So in this one, we're given that x is minus 3, and we need to find what the y value is. So the only difference is that this is not a curve. This function is a collection of points, but it still works the same way. We're going to go to an x value of minus 3, and then go up to our curve, or in this case, our point that the function's evaluated at for an x value of minus 3. And that would be this point right here, and we just need the y value. So the function, when you plug in minus 3, you get a y value or a function value of 1. So 1 would be our answer for this one. And looking at one final question here, we want h of 0, still very similar to the last one. We just have a collection of points rather than a continuous curve. But in this case, we're given that x is equal to 0, and we need to figure out what the y value is. So we find an x value of 0. We go up, and we find that point that's colored in blue. And it looks like when x is 0, the y value is 5. So we would put 5 into our box here. And let's do one final one just to kind of wrap this up. So h of 6, now we're back to the curve questions. And again, our axes are the x and y axes. So we're given that our independent variable, the number on the inside, x, is equal to 6 in this case. And our dependent variable, our function value, h, or our y value, we don't know. That's what we're trying to find. So when x is given as 6, what is our y value? So we find an x value of 6. We go all the way up to our curve. Looks to be right here. And that's a y value of 8. So this curve goes through the point 6, 8. 
and the value that we put in the box is the y value. 